That's got the right IP. Yeah. This is good stuff. Alrighty, all right. well, Let's we're see. live, Jeff Carpenter. For hey! Another, for another episode, another episode or of our live Twitch streaming with Jeff going over Python. That's right. Recommendation engine in Python. <clears throat> we're building a graph recommender for a killer video Python. We're in the home stretch here. Well, I think we're in the home stretch of getting this done. Um, so I'll show you what in theory should happen. We're de actually debugging another problem. Something else broke. So uh, we are trying to, the recent videos is not populating right now. So I have, I seem to have broken something. I'm not sure what, how I did All that. Because I didn't do it. That's what's most important. Is my video way uh, not synchronized with my, um, out of, is it way out of sync? Uh, let me see. Kind of funny to myself. If it's not going to bother you, then. Hold on real quick. Zuki. Okay. There we go. All right, let me take a look. Let's see. Here, I'm going to play. Can you talk for me, Jeff? Posing everything non-essential. Yes, I'm talking to you. So... Yeah. Oh, close maps? Seems okay. We'll close it all. Everything yeah. non-essential is going. Everything must go. personnel. All out the airlock. That's right. But, so, yeah, sometimes... Here, I'm going to stop sharing for just a second and then reshare. And then hopefully we'll get that, that back. What do you think? Is it better? I think we're good. We'll, we'll go yeah. with it for right now. Yeah, you can yeah. tell no, me if fine. anything is going bad. So, okay. So in theory, uh, we would have the recent videos populating here. I've clearly broken something, but I don't want to totally derail what we were going to talk about today to try okay. to debug that at the moment. Right. So um, we are trying to get this recommended for you video section populated. So I have a couple different things that I'm working with here. One of them is uh, source code. You built a Java version. So the uh, other video, Java. And I've been, I've been looking through this source code. Okay. Um, a, a lot of the logic is in this uh, killer, killer video traversal DSL okay. class. Oh, now, now i got spinny wheel. Man. Spinning okay. wheel, yeah, spinning wheel. So we go presentation mode on this guy. So I'm foreshadowing a little bit here, but my here's what my task was, is I was looking at um, different source that you have here. This is the traversal, but the, I'm sorry, the domain specific language that you created. Right. And it's got a lot of definition. It's got, um, operations oh there's something actually i haven't looked at some of these things here in a while um so like you have a, a friendly java language operation here called rated and mm -hmm. then that that actually is uh returning some gremlin expressions here mm -hmm. which have some different behaviors uh rated you've you've got um as you've got watched, which is really just an alias for rated. Yes. Um, you have user uploaded. So this is like creating this language that you can use in the um, the service implementation of the suggested videos service. Right. That's the service that actually sits behind those recommendations. Suggested video service. So you got this is this is all the logic that I was trying to steal, basically. Right. Um, there's like, here, this is the important one. This is the one I was playing with yesterday, tagged with. So, uh, you know, given a, uh, given a traversal that is stopped at a, an incoming video vertex, you assume that the, tra the traversal that you're operating on is a video vertex, then you are going to, um, look for the tag, which has that date. 
that, that has the name that's that's provided and then add an edge to that tag. And then there's this other operation called tag, which is, it. so this DSL is like referring to pieces of itself. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to go through all this code and um, that's that's what I've been doing is in, in the Python world, trying to reproduce the same logic. Right. My idea was to not do the domain specific language okay. at first because um, I was just trying to kind of like build things simply a little bit at a time. Uh, so let's see. Oh, my killer video Java window just took off on me. Thanks a lot, killer video Java window. So you've got this. Um... I'm sorry, I put that evade oh, class go? in there the last time I was in the code. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, it keeps it interesting, right? That's okay. Oh, here we go. Suggested video service. So you have this operation like get suggested for user. Mm -hmm. And the most of the logic that is in here is actually more about, you know, using futures and et cetera. Like yeah. it actually, the entire uh, generation of the graph, we're using data Sox enterprise graph here to generate this. So you've got this DSL that you're using doing specific language recommend by user rating. So you're selecting a particular user and then getting five recommendations for that particular user with a minimum rating of four, sampling a thousand other ratings, et cetera. Um, and you're sampling, I guess, five movies that this user rated and comparing that to a thousand ratings from the, that other people have, have rated. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so most of the logic you've actually kind of delegated it out to this DSL. So I'm doing the same basic concept here in Python, except uh, my execution is very simple, simplistic in a lot of ways. So I'm, I'm going to show you what I've been up to lately in this stuff. I see what you did there, Jeff. I see what you did there. Wait, if you don't like my code in Java. No. <laughs> no, that's not... The stuff I'm, I'm just I'm building it up. It's really easy to read. No, no, I'll admit I'm I'm playing by the way. I'll admit, I'll admit like the DSL is great for the end goal, right? Like when yeah, right. when you are then writing the actual code in the language of your DSL, it is really easy to read and understand and such and that is the end goal, but the DSL itself can be a little complex, right? As you mentioned before, things kind of refer to other things in there. Like you kind of have to, you have to kind of get your head wrapped around the chain of events that is occurring, right? To, to understand. Right. Um, which... And actually, I think that there's a great debate that we could have at some point, mm -hmm. possibly not today. Yeah. Uh, whereas the, the best methodology for introducing a domain specific language into graph queries, the way that, my natural inclination is to do it and the way i think you did it when yeah. you were doing killer video java yeah is to actually literally write out all of the logic of the traversals that you're going to do first and then factor out a dsl out of that yes, yes. Um, i almost wonder if from a design standpoint if maybe once you had some competence um, in in this domain of, of graph databases, maybe you would actually prefer to start with the DSL. Because if you think about it, this is how you most people develop applications, is you write the API and then you write the implementation. Or, or maybe you don't. Maybe you write the implementation first and write the API later. <laughs> in which case, um, creating the DSL as a second step is, uh, yeah. is a perfectly sensible thing to do. Well, I don't know what the... In, in the case of best um, way is. In the, the path that I took was to actually start with the, the graph schema, right? Created the schema right. first because the schema is actually what generated the DSL. I didn't generate it and with that's some a really, command. Yeah, that's a fantastic point. And so actually, you're right. Your DSL actually that you ended up with really heavily mirrors the schema. That was on purpose. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, that's exactly what that the whole point of that yeah. was because... What, okay. what the intent of the DSL was to do, right? Like, okay, I took it, and, and, I, and I got this also from people like Steve Millette and others like who, who wrote that stuff, right? That okay. the, the intent okay. 
was so someone who was let's say someone but you know funny enough you're almost disproving this in a way <laughs> from the yeah. from what you were just talking about in the java code but let's say somebody who wasn't a everyday programmer or someone who was an analyst or someone someone who was brand new to this code they just or something like that the intent was can i write this in such a way that if i took a look at my graph schema and i i saw what that what i would expect there right things like user rated video user uploaded yeah. video and so on and so forth right could i translate that into code into such a way that i could write the code the same way so without them worrying about the underlying implementation details of the dsl that someone would have to implement that obviously right but once that was implemented right. could they come into the code and could they write their traversals i'm going to put that in quote the same way that i just read out my schema so that was the end so goal. if i look at what's if i look at what's in your dsl yeah it seems like it has two flavors, I'll generalize, yeah. two flavors of operations. Some of them are operations like literally there is a user operation and you pass it a, oh, I hate it when it does that, it pass it a, a user ID. Okay. I always forget to click on yeah. that and then yeah. I lose my pop-up. Okay, so it's a user and you pass in a user ID and that is literally you know the operation that gives you the user at that user ID. Right. And then there's similar things for rated and uploaded and tagged with. But you also have other things like taggers and generate recommendations for user and mm -hmm. you know other things that are not not just traversing the schema itself. Yes. But so there's a mix. It is. Okay. It is. There's, I totally agree with what you just said. There are essentially two sets of operations. There's the ones that I would just call CRUD operations, right? I need to get data yeah. into the schema into the graph i need to get data out of the graph i need to relate data that's in the graph but at the end of the day i need to perform the recommendation traversal right so right um so that's where those two different sets come into play it's it's up it's almost more like crud operations and then business logic operations against the graph does that make sense right. so this this is my uh suggested video service file okay. that i'm showing you the big big blown up view of here at this point okay um so actually you can see that some things that i wonder if i could mm, i haven't committed this code i was gonna say i i could potentially go back a couple of commits and show you the progression of this over time okay but then maybe that's a little bit fancier than i should really try to do today so um, i'm gonna go past this get suggested for user okay. method here this is what i'm working on right now but let me show you we haven't done this stream in a couple of weeks travel vacations yeah um, won't bore you with the details, backstory, blah, 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 right? Um, so what I do want to show you is I have been working on, let me see, where did I do this? Oh yeah, that's the, that is the, the recommender. Okay, so handle user, um, handle user created, this is the first thing that we got working. So if you'll remember, we have a user management service. Uh, when you add a new user in the killer video UI, it calls the user management service and then the user management service emits an event to Kafka. Our suggested video service is picking that event up off of Kafka and it's adding a node, a user node to the graph. Okay, and this was our first one that we got working. And um, I have been using the style of API that seemed easiest to me. Because there are multiple ways that the DataStacks uh, Python driver supports uh, creating and executing gremlin statements for yeah. graph, right? right. Um, the one that I'm using here is this Fluent API. There is another, another prime, I don't know if there's multiple other ways, but, um, oh, of course I would go to look at the, I was gonna pull the documentation page up. <laughs> I think I have a link to it actually. Oh yeah, yeah, here you go. I bet you there's the string API, the Fluent API, uh, and then the yeah yeah so if you go to the getting started page I don't really know that third one as well right um, yeah so I'm sorry so session execute graph that's what you're talking about yeah. right and yeah. then you put that's that string that in used. there yeah so I'm using this the traversal source where I actually get a get a G uh, 
G is representation of a graph traversal source, and then I'm doing a, then you could do these fluent style APIs that look pretty similar, or let's say deceptively similar to what you would actually write in Studio. Yes. Because you've got all these, I'm going to Studio now, and you've got all these query, you built this notebook that you provided to me, super helpful, and so we're actually like, you know, this is the straight up gremlin queries that we can see in Studio. Um, so that, this API that I'm using, I was like, I want something that's as close to what I run in Studio hmm. as possible. Okay. Um, and then, wait, there's a third one? Those are the, oh, is the DSE the third one? Because I see, I see the, um, the session style and then the, pi, the, you know, the fluent API style. Mm -hmm. What's the third style? Oh, string. You could just so, do a string API where you just. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there an example? I think there's an example in this page. Implicit. Okay. So this is the good one that I like. And then there's this other one. I thought it was on this page. Hmm. Okay. You're right. The string based one where you can actually do like uh parameter substitution and that kind of stuff, right? You just write this big long string, which is your government query, but which then you have like little yeah. question marks. You have question marks where you want to insert parameters. You know, funny, I believe like that's that. true, but funny enough, there's an example. In I, I never used it like that. I, I did yeah. do it in my initial development when I was just figuring stuff out. Cause what I would do is I'd cheat. I would write a traversal in studio right or a gremlin console i would execute it make sure yeah. it worked and then i would just plop it into the string api go okay that works then i would make the uh the other uh more fluent type but it's not it's not really using the fluent api i should mention that both can yeah. use both use the same yeah. reference to g if you take a look at the java code um even though i have the mm -hmm. dsl in place you'll see that it uses yeah. that you can use them interchangeably so it just depends what okay. you're using right. since right. i was already using the dse driver with session it just made sense for me to do it that way Okay, so this was my first uh, Gremlin query that I implemented in Python, and it was super easy, maybe even deceptively simple. Yeah. Because it looks very much like uh, what the Gremlin query. I chose right. to name my variable graph instead of G. Yeah. I don't remember why I did that, but it's, you more know, it's a convention. Yeah. It's a convention That's thing, right. yeah. Okay, so handle YouTube video added. This is the one that we were actually working on last time, so I'm pretty excited about this. Okay. Um, and actually here, I, I think I know what I can do. Maybe this will be a bit of a, uh, let's just do it this way. Instead of me trying to do like, um, switching branches and showing you my demonstrating my, uh, level of incompetency with <laughs> Git, I'm okay with Git, but I'm like, I would be, I'm just fearful that I would be likely to, um, do something and inadvertently lose some code because I I'm doing something spontaneous here and I don't want to do that. So spontaneous with Jeff. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, I got to go to the branch here. Jeff okay, graph recommender. Jeff spontaneous, but Jefftanius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. We're getting Jefftanius right now. Yeah. We're gonna use that now. I don't really even know. Oh, wait. There's one that says. Let me see if it's this one. Oh yeah, this is the one. <laughs> Let's see. Can you blow it up a okay. little bit? So, yeah, the last time I was working on this is like right the last time we were working. Yeah. Um. So this handle YouTube video added method. Yeah. I uh, I had this in steps. I don't know if you could trace the algorithm here, but I had this comment. First, I'm going to find the user vertex and add an edge. And so I literally did a, uh, an entire gremlin query here. Right. And then I took that code out and I just said, okay, um, first I'm going to look up video as this thing. Okay. And I, this is, this is a representation of a traversal. Right. right. Oh, I remember this. Yep. And I remember you do. I'm going to run another traversal. Right. Literally a second processing step to my gremlin engine. And I'm going to, add this to video and video is a traversal. Right. Do you see that? Right. So this is like, a, um, this never, this never actually worked right That's because right. I was trying to build it in pieces instead of just building one big traversal like you did. Okay. Originally. And that's where I got into trouble is like, you don't actually want to break this into multiple traversals. 
I was, it's not that it can't be done this way. I was doing something that was kind of a grin, against the grain of how you're actually supposed to use Gremlin. Right. I was trying to break it up into pieces and actually do, I was actually doing multiple different traversals. And I hadn't yes. even done this to do stuff here to find the vertexes for the tags and add edges. So I was literally trying to build this thing where, okay, step one is I'm going to write a traversal that, uh, like it says here, find the user vertex and add an edge to the video vertex. Execute that. Next, um, find that same video vertex and then um, find the user vertex that goes with it. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, Okay, I mean, I was I was adding the video vertex. Then I was locating the user and adding a to adding a, an edge to the video. And then I'm going through and looping for however many tags there are, right. checking to see if the tag exists. And blah 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 blah. Anyway, so this long convoluted set of stuff. I I went back and I was like, this is this is really not working well. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to. I'm going to do the same three-step process, but I'm going to build a single traversal. I, I noticed your and traversal I object it. earlier. Good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm creating a traversal object, and I'm just saying step one, locating the user. You're also okay? using caret user. You're using the reference. Nice. Yeah. Um, this is a, another... My impression by looking at your code is that is con, this is convention, not required. Is that right. true? That's... that's Yes, that's as I understand that as well. I myself like to be very explicit, so that's why yeah. I'm doing it the way I do. Thank it. you for yeah, thank you for calling that out. So that is basically we're saying that that is a representation, like uh, because user is a keyword in our schema. I don't know if there's a way to get confused, but caret user is a way of just making sure that we're explicit and disambiguating that. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Notice then that I'm I'm just appending to this traversal. Yep. Right? Traversal yep. equals traversal dot. And then I'm continuing to build up this traversal. I'm gonna add a video with the with all the properties of it. And I'm gonna say that's as video. Okay? That's my next step is adding the video vertex. Then this next step is I'm gonna add an edge from the user to the video vertex. And look how clean this is. I love yeah. this, right? Add E uploaded from carrot user to carrot video. Yeah. So at this point, uh, the thing that I was, that I'm always, that I'm learning that I need to be conscious of as I'm kind of building these traverses is where are I, what are, am I in this traversal or what are the kind of like, what are the current contents of the traversal? Am I at a node? Am I at a, or a vertex? Am I at an edge? Do I have a collection? Of vertices, for example. I mean, that's that's part of the mental model that you I think you have to have as you're building these queries. So I'm just I'm, I'm learning the process of doing that. And have you have you tried exporting any of the bytecode or logging out any of the bytecode for your traversals? Uh, so this is one of the things that I was going to ask you about. Okay. Um, I don't actually know how to do that. Okay. And I haven't stopped and tried to do that yet. Okay. If, if you remember a couple, I of... think that I want to put. I want to. I want to. Yep. Um, I have a, a. I have a place where I think it would be great to do that. Okay. So I want to. I do want to do that with you. Um, but I don't. I'm not sure if I'm there yet. So Got can it. We, can we come back to that? Totally. Totally. I, I'll just okay. finish a thought then. Um, if you remember, okay. um, a couple streams back, right? Uh, we had uh, one of the viewers. Uh, who gave us some of that code actually and what, where the bytecode came in at least for me really useful is to exactly yeah. what you just said a second ago where you're saying trying to get your head wrapped around like when you add all these steps in where what object do you really have back at this point like where are you at in in that traversal right the bytecode right. is really neat because what could happen is you could just take the output from the bytecode of your traversal it would give you the full thing right filled out with all the references and stuff you have in here because it's getting that from the code and and that kind of deal and then when you do that i could just take that cut and paste it right in the studio or gremlin console and i have the traversal i can execute the traversal right there and then i can see exactly what i'm getting back am i getting back a set of vertices a vertex am i an edge what am i and it allowed me from the development standpoint to take a look at where i was from a code standpoint where i thought i was and then kind of get my head wrapped around and grok what 
mm-hmm. what point I was actually at in the traversal without having to go through a bunch of debug code just to figure that out, right? So it was it was a neat way that I could go, oh, and oh, here now look, I can add on, you know, I can I can add on this step or I can look at these properties or something, and then it started to give me kind right. of more mental options of what I could do in code, if that makes sense. Okay. No, I like all that. I want to definitely want to get there. Um, so, okay, at this point, I've added an edge from my user to the video vertex. And then the, the final step is uh, I want to um, create the tagged width edges that go from the video to its tags. Okay? Okay. Yep. So this is just, you know, regular Python list manipulation, right, for tag in tags. Okay. And then I'm going to continue to add to my traversal. And for every tag, I'm going to add an edge. It's a tagged with edge. And it's going to go from the video to a tag. Um, but we don't yet know if the tag exists. Yeah. So, oh yeah, this is all code logic that I stole from you. Yeah. Um, this is the, this operator is the anonymous traverser. So this is basically yes, kind yes. of... Of the, I, I think of this as like reset to zero. <laughs> is that a way? Of, like, or just some? I don't know how, if that's the best way to say it or not. Like, it's a it's a it's a new traversal, in a sense. That begins you know, I'm from not the best else. person to answer that. That's, I should look, um, I should really learn a good way to explain this. But what yeah. this is basically doing is this is an this is an operator that the coalesce operator is returning the first. You put like a list of traver, of other traversals. And the first one that returns a value, it returns that value. I know that much. So yeah. this first one is we're actually trying to look up and see if there's a vertex in this graph that has that named tag. So like there's a, we might get a video that's come in that's tagged with the keyword Cassandra. Right. So if that tag with the keyword of Cassandra exists, then this traversal will return that. Right. And if not... We're going to go ahead and actually use another anonymous traversal here to just go in and add a vertex with that with that tag, and then we're going to use the same date uh, as when the video is added. We'll just use that same added date from the video and make that the tagged date. Yes. Okay. Um, and then let's see. Oh, actually, I might I might want to. Oh, that's right. Yes, I'm adding a new vertex. Okay, got it, got it. That's right. Um, and okay, that's right. I was like, where are the properties? But it turns out if you look at the schema, the, the tagged with edge doesn't have any properties on that edge. Right. So that's really it. Yeah. That's, we're done. And then we can uh, execute the traversal by calling iterate. And then we're done. So I was so happy when I got this working. Yeah. But one little thing. I had to, um, it was... <laughs> And this is gonna sound. I'm. This is gonna sound like me whining. She whined. <laughs> and actually, I'm. I. I need to provide. Some, I've just been working on this the past couple of days, and I have some feedback that I need to provide, which I. I think will hopefully be helpful to other people that come along and to um, some of our teams that are doing docs for this stuff. It. I typed this in here. Um, this uh, anonymous traversal, and of course. Uh, the IDE was immediately complaining. I don't know what that is. Yep. Right? So I do this, right? I had the same thing in Java. I, um, I'm so curious to see what you had to do for this, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, I, so first thing, I went to Java. Okay. <laughs> um, and I was I like, saw a really what strange did you import do? statement. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, where is... I want to say it's a static, isn't it? Stuff. It'd be at the bottom. I usually put Am my I, statics I'm in. actually... Oh, it's up you there. You know, I'm sorry, there dude. Is. I'm in the... Yeah, I guess that's no, that's that's not it. That's that, that's from the DSL stuff. So actually, I'm in the wrong file. I really should be in. By the way, while you're looking, Adrian Adrian asks when you say byte code, that's spelled B Y T E code, right? Yeah, yes, byte code as in B Y as in a byte. B Y T E, not a byte code. The other video Java, like okay, a zombie I'm going byte to code. Not a zombie byte code. The traversal. Here we go. Is that where I want to be? Oh, interesting. Where is that file? 
I don't actually see it here. I know that you're using the anonymous traversal in here. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not there. Oh, it's a reference to generated code. That's why. Okay, so there's some code generation stuff going on in the Java world. Anyway, <laughs> sometimes I go down some blind alleys. <clears throat> go to Radio Python. Go to presentation mode. Bam. So I actually... Oh, and how do I expand this thing? Super weird. Okay, you can see it here. From... Uh, that third line three from gremlin python gremlin underscore python yeah. dot process dot graph traversal import that double underscore anonymous traversal and actually you can see a co another line underneath that with some more traversals from this gremlin, gremlin python package oh. um <clears throat> this took some doing man that was this was not obvious to me so i ended up first of all the um, our documentation does not go into a lot of the API. So our Python driver documentation does not have a ton on the actual API. And that is actually because a lot of this is in, let's see if I can find it here, the Tinkerpop documentation. Interesting, okay. So there's this Gremlin Python section in here. And... So this begins like, oh, here's some big clues. Oh. Um, so I just literally started poking around because um, I was like, I don't, oh, I also, I did Googling and thanks, thank you, Ned Lowe, right? Because he was the first one that clued me in. This was, I, I was literally, I was literally Googling like gremlin Python example. And then guess what came up? Gremlin dash Python dash example. So I just went in here and started poking around what and looking at some of documentation, you know, his code, code. You know, like how you do, right how you do this stuff. <laughs> right? So I'm like, oh, look, G dot V dot, look, this is, this is looking familiar to me. It's so like, what are your things? And I'm like, ah. oh. This is where this stuff comes from. So sure enough, then I, that's how I got to the Python documentation, common imports, and now I feel like I'm kind of cooking, you know, like I got it. So I know where the packages are of these things. Um, but, oh, do I still have this thing open? Yeah, yeah, okay, so I was like, well, where's the official API for the Gremlin Python package? Because like, this is just, this Tinkerbot documentation is just kind of like helpful, helpful stuff, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Also, by the way, I'm sure that I can, uh, the, I'm going to show you some code here. I haven't done this statics, lo this, I guess that's this thing from Gremlin Python import statics. And then apparently you can do this and it allows you to omit package names from stuff or class oh. prefix. Oh, that's cool. I haven't done it. So you're going to, you're going to see that my code is not as clean as the Java code looks. Right. Don't worry. We're going to, we're going, we're, <laughs> we're going down in the stuff here, man. Um, Okay, so let's see. So one thing, one thing that this doesn't actually look as bad as it as it's gonna get, right? No, this it, handle... and and one thing to note, right? If you're yeah. going through this, it this is I'm kind of torn on what I'm just about to say. So yeah. I guess this really comes down to style and what your end goal is, right? Yeah. Where in the Java version, like I said, the end goal there was <clears throat> to provide the DSL, so then you could yeah. essentially write the the business traversal if you will the business logic traversal um very easily or traversals very easily but it means right. that you have complexity in the dsl that from someone trying to understand the code base it's not linear right you have to pop around and look at different methods and understand how they're chaining together and such where right you did yours more in line you just wrote it in line so at a glance i can actually take a look at the page and as you were talking about this before at a glance i can actually read right down and I can pretty much see what's going on. The difference, yeah. though, is that this, I would argue, is not <laughs> as flexible as the DSL. Oh, where, it's not. No, no, no. But, no. but it is it's actually... It's quick and dirty. It's quick and dirty, and it's easier to understand from the I'm just getting going standpoint. Um, but then like later on, when you're actually writing the bigger traversals and stuff... I wonder. Right. I wonder how that's going to come into play, but it's interesting because. It... Well, yeah, you're going to see. You're going to see. Uh oh. Okay, and this is. I, I think that this is actually this is an example of um, stylistic differences. Yes. Too, yes. And where where I think where we can actually 
this is okay. I think it's okay that the Python can demonstrate a quick and dirty. Yeah. And then the you can provide provide the more refined example in the Java application, which might represent a more mature, uh, you know, like you know, Java enterprise programming language. A lot mm. of people use prototype Python for prototyping. Right. I'm right. not saying it's not a real. I'm I'm not saying it's not a real. Right. Inter, um, um, what sort of production level <laughs> programming language? I'm not saying that. It's it's very much a real a real deal thing. Um, but I'm just trying to provide quick and dirty examples yeah. here. Actually, so I like that, that rabbit hole. I like that. that I like that, having both, honestly, because it, it right. Gives us... This is, we have. That's why we have different language implementations of killer video too, yeah. right? So different styles. Um, that that whole rabbit hole that I just went down of my search for documentation. Yeah. And there's more to come. There's more to come of that. I was just trying to show you how I actually got to the point of writing that. Um, <laughs> being able to get my. Uh, my typing error, or I don't recognize this thing. I don't recognize this symbol, right? Okay. Yeah. When I read squigglies to go away. That was the reason. That was I had to go down that whole rabbit hole to sort of figure all that out. But then this thing works, and it's and it's really easy. Like once it worked, it worked great. Um, and then handle user rated video. Now I'm just rolling downhill by this point. Like right. I got this, right? So, you know, look up the user node a user rated a video so i'm going to create this rated edge from the user to the video um and so i already had most of the code from this from the other methods but okay. i'm going to get the user and then from the user i'm going to add a rated edge and then i'm going to get go from that from that user the rated edge to the video and i'm going to actually use my anonymous traverser here now i'm such a pro with anonymous <laughs> traversals right with my video id that i looked up and then you know, dot property rating and then iterate. So like at this point, I'm feeling like this is pretty easy. Okay. Um, then, oh, okay, so wait, the payoff. I, I, we need the emotional payoff, do we not? Yes. Okay. Let's see it. Let's, I mean, by the way, I happened to notice earlier that your your graph yeah. looks like- You already saw. <laughs> you yeah, already I saw, saw that. that. I was like, oh, he's okay, been doing so it. He's been doing it. <laughs> for the purposes of, this is just very simple for the purposes of demonstration. You know, we've come in here and we're we're in development mode because we're gonna just run some queries that are like not necessarily queries that you would run in production level settings, right? So we're just kind of in a more like a development mode here in Studio, and we're just gonna grab a bunch of vertices from the graph up to 200, and then it's just gonna show all the edges between them. Um, and yes, I did uh, I did go through and customize the icons. Yeah, I noticed this, that. Right? Nice. Okay, so, oh, am I not connected right now? Uh-oh. Okay, well, we won't show you that right now, but uh, in any case, um, we have this particular user here, uh, Corrine16 at example.net, who's got interaction with a lot of videos. Um, so they, they um, let's see. Trying to get that edge to show up. Uploaded. So they uploaded this particular video, which is down your download your copy of Data Stacks Distribution of Apache Cassandra. Looks like they also did uh, Avengers Endgame, and they uploaded that one. Um, I'm looking for one that they rated, if they rated anything. I mean, I suppose I could actually run a query, but... Oh, there we go. So this... The user Cornell sixteen, uh, they gave a rating of three to this video, which is uh, again, it's more uh, Avengers stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. so you see that this whole thing is being built up. We have users that uh, we have. Well, as you can see here in my in my key, I guess down here at the bottom might be a little bit small. So I don't know you can, you can how just much read violence it. I'm going to do. Yeah, you can just read it. Oh, you did you go for the full screen? Yeah, I did it. Okay, so tag, we have tags, users, and videos. And then, you know, on this whole graph, you see all the connections there. So I was like, yes, I finally have all this data in my graph. And all of this has just gotten us to the point where we're ready to actually write the recommendation piece, the recommendation engine, so to speak, which is really just a gremlin traversal. Yep. Boom. Okay, so one of the things that I noticed that was actually pretty funny here 
that I'm going to ask you, put you on the spot and ask okay. you uh, why did I a do couple this? of questions <laughs> about this implementation. Uh, I'm going to clear out the I cobwebs of like two years ago or detail. whatever I wrote that. <laughs> what were you thinking two years ago when you first wrote this? Of what part? The whole thing? I don't mean, I don't mean what were you thinking. No, I know. Right. I'm kidding. What were right. you thinking? Well, you asked me a question, then I cut off right when you asked it, so it paused in my end. What? Say it again. No, no. Um, oh, you're getting there? No problem. No problem. Um, okay, let's go to presentation mode on this. I'll uh, go into remove cobweb mode. I'm going to dust cobwebs. Executing dust cobwebs. Okay. This is an operation. Wow, why did it scroll up? That's I don't like the switching to presentation mode, and then I lose my spot. That's not helpful. All right. So... Some things I really like about this code. Shout outs to uh, all your friends that helped you write it. <laughs> it's epic. Uh, user, this is the algorithm of this recommendation engine. Using the videos that I really like, in other words, those that I rated fours or fives. Okay. And really, it's not I, it's well, whoever the current user is. But I, Yeah, I put things in that. You, in, you really personalize this yeah. and identify it. Like, I'm going to... I'm going to walk into my code as well, a user. And, and I, honestly, I look at that because at this point, you're, you're right. I'm totally I'm, mocking you, and it's so I, wrong. I was looking at it from the standpoint of I'm, I'm in Killer Video. I have registered an account. I have logged in as that user. I have, yeah. in order for, for this to work, because the recommendations are, in fact, personalized. So it's not just yeah. any user. It is When you look at the whole of it, yes, it's, it's any user, but from the – from the user end user experience as they're going through it, I'm logged in and it's any videos that I really like because I've rated them high. That's where I'm coming at this, right? You know what I mean? So right. you're right. I, I guess in, from the code, it, it could be either way. <laughs> That's funny. Right. Um, it was important that I do a quick score check. So uh, Liverpool 5, Huddersfield Town 0. Oh. Still probably not going to win the championship, oh. but it's important to keep track of <laughs> very important. these things that as they're occurring in real time. Important. Uh, yeah, probably dating this instantly dates this video. Uh, um, <laughs> for anyone who watches later, okay. So, using videos I really like, find other users who really like the same videos and grab videos they really like while excluding any videos that I have watched already. And actually, we are not tracking uh, watch statistics. And I want you to you know that if you register an account, this is to the viewing public, you register an account on killerradio.com. Uh, we are not keeping track of what videos you watch. You can watch whatever you want, know what as you've many uploaded. cat videos as you want, and we'll never know. We yeah. do, and we do know what you've rated. We do. We yes. We, we know are not rated. tracking. We are now, tracking we view count counts. watches. We do count watches, count, but yes. we don't track the person as they watch. That's right. Right. But you can right. do that in the traversal. That's right. So it really, what I'm all I'm saying is, where it says excluding any videos I have watched, really it's excluding any videos that I have rated. Which is important. That turns out to be important for the traversal. That's right. That you're absolutely right. I think I even have a comment about that somewhere in here. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. I, I did read your code. I even read most of the comments. Wow. I yeah. Hope they were. Uh, yeah. Entertaining and I, informational. I want to model good developer behavior to the world. You know. I'm As glad you feel that that's advocate. good developer behavior. Now I'm waiting for the shooter. So I read for the most stuff of your you're comments. Call me out on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I feel we're adequately prepared for that, and I'm fully. Pre I'm also fully prepared to ask you a question, which is completely answered already in comments that you wrote. I'm expecting this to happen at some point. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So you're going through here. You're doing some checking. Yeah. 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 This is your DS. This is the DSL, right? Recommend by user rating. Um, we've already. The expectation is we're in kind of a middle of a traversal. I think that we are, yes, we've already patched, passed in. It says it here in the comments. Yeah. Start with the current user. So the traversal that we are starting from at this point, we are assuming we already have the user as the currently selected node. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I am not going to try to explain this algorithm here, although we may get to it later in, in the Python code. Um, I love what you've done here. This is highly readable to me and helpful, um, where you have a one-line comment in front of each line of the traversal. Also, at the same time, this is a really long 
traversal. Yes. <laughs> and it's pretty complex. Yeah. And I would not be able to understand this other. Neither otherwise. would I. But that's exactly why I did that. <laughs> that's, there's all kinds yeah. of interesting little stuff in here, like this GTE operation greater than or equals to. You notice that it's just dropped in here as a function without reference to anything else. There's these little things here and there which are like that, where like not equals and um, what is it? Or oh, sac assign. Yeah. I'm like, what is this assign thing? Yeah. Right? And yeah. then group by. There's some pretty esoteric um, commands. As a matter of fact, scope.local. It's funny like you're pointing out some of those because. Yeah. So this particular traversal is not. This isn't something that I would say is really heavily using the DSL. It it does in kind No, that's of a way... right. Okay, so you anticipated my question. Yeah. Oh, you're wondering why I didn't use that for this. So so here's where I you know, I would love the input. Because you could have done this, right? You could have it, uh, the this breaks down into pieces, which I'll show you yeah. nicely. Um actually, here's a here's the, the point. Now we're working. This is a very big clue that there's like a a break in the logic, right? Yeah. This is like this is um, we are at, th at this point, we have a list of users. So like you could have created a function in your DSL that given a user, mm. it is called find similar users. Yep. That's right. I you could, could have broken this out as a function. You're right. But you, and there's no real reason one way or the other why you didn't just right. like you didn't really have need of it. It wasn't a reusable function that you needed somewhere else. So you right didn't there, that, that's it that. right there. Yeah. Okay. That, you're absolutely right. I mean, there are ways that this could have been broken up. Now, this is where, and this, this again, I think comes comes down to completely the style. I'm sure that there might be someone else who would take what I did here and they could totally just dsl DSLify it, right, or something like that. Yeah. So this is where, for me, I made this distinction. And funny enough, this goes back to something you were showing in the Python code that I commented on a little bit ago about yeah. how you had some parts in line and it was easier to understand. So this is where I made a distinction between CRUD operations and my business logic, right? That's how I'm looking at it. Um, okay. For the simple CRUD operations, the, mm. the, the things where I'm adding things to the graph, I'm, well, I never really delete anything, but I'm adding things to the graph, I'm, I'm forming edges, that kind of deal. All of those are small reusable components that I know I'm going to use over and over and over. So I implemented all yeah. those types of operations <clears throat> with the DSL. However- And funny enough, you do, you do reuse some of them. Watched- yeah, uh, that yeah, is a, an operation in the DSL. Yes, and where I can Which screwed me up. I I'll, did. I'll oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> okay. okay, yeah. Okay. So where yeah. I can, I did. In that case, to your point, where where I could reference it, I did. But generally speaking, if I put it in the DSL, they were, they were. I'm trying to think of how to word this. They were individual components that performed a very specific task, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you remember some of the examples. Um, like tagged with, right? That did one thing, yep. right? Uh, or, or any right. of the other pieces like that. They did one thing, constituent component kind of stuff that was repeatable and reusable. In the case of the traversal that you were looking at a moment ago, where you're looking at the fuller recommendation engine, I could mm -hmm. have broken that up. But I, for me, I felt like if I tried to break that up into the DSL, it would have been almost impossible to understand. Because you notice that okay. even in that in okay. that business logic, I'm going to call it a business logic. This is where I'm actually now saying, all right, I'm separating between the things that manage the graph itself and then the questions I'm asking of the graph. In this case, this kind of recommendation engine traversal. Um, so I only have one of these. Let's pretend for a moment that I had – I actually do have multiple recommendation engines in the, in the studio. But let's pretend yes. I had other things, other right. business logic-like traversals that I wanted to execute – with the methodology I chose, I would have done them the same way. And the reason being is, I mean, under part this of is the, that original one in, I think yes. this is the original recommendation engine and, in, and to me, in this notebook, it's not reusable in the but same way. More. It's, it's sure. If I would have put another recommendation engine in there, it would have had similar traversal steps Routine. and so on and so forth. But as yeah. a whole, it was harder for me to break that down into the constituent parts and make it in the DSL and actually understand it at the same time. So I essentially just made a decision. My decision was the stuff that was CRUD operations and that dealt with putting things into the graph and organizing things in the graph, I did that in the DSL. Anything else mm -hmm. that was then using the data that was in the graph to, per to perform traversals 
that did something like the recommendation engine, I left inline. And I, I solely did that just for under, understandability because um, uh, if you notice again, you go back to that code and you see all those comments I had in there. Those comments were also for me because as I was working through that, that was a hairy traversal, right? Um, yeah. As I was working through that thing, there are so many little details in there. There's a lot going in that traversal. Um, and I'll admit that I'm glad that when you first looked at it, you said it actually made it easier for you to understand seeing it in line like that. Um, that was, again, that was how I, I wrote it like that, partially because of what they did in the hackathon and then partially what I did moving on. Um, but yeah, I just, I found that I could not keep it all together if I had it broken up all over the place. And so, yeah, so I just made that, I just made that decision in the way that I approached it. Um, and yeah, you're right. I, I tried then what I did is once I created the traversal, like the watch videos you pointed out, once I created it, I went back and I was like, okay, well, what parts of this can now be called with, a, you know, what parts can I actually just replace with stuff I have in the DSL that's reusable? And that's why you might see a couple pieces. I did like an optimization after, um, but yeah, it was, it was for readability and for understandability um, mm -hmm. because it was such a large hunk and traversal and it would never be repeated. Like there's no constituent part. You could break it apart, like what you said, like list uh, the videos or something like that. Uh, um, find similar users, I think, could be reusable. You could. You That's could my counter-argument. Yeah, it just, um, it, it just wasn't... But the thing me, is, I you was... could have different algorithms for find similar users. You, you, you could. could you, you absolutely could, right? Of... So, so maybe that's... Yeah, I like, further... the thing I like about that is you could, you could swap those in and out. Just to over-engineer yeah. this a little bit. Yeah. Let me over-engineer this for a minute. <laughs> I could have multiple implementations. Uh, if I had multiple recommendation engine algorithms, or I wanted to, I wanted to do recommendations based on similar users. Right. I could literally have like three different implementations of find similar you users. You could. You could. And then find. Then I could have downstream implementations of, of operations that came after that were like find recommendations based on similar users. Or you could. Right. That, and that would be. And then I could mix and match those. And if you, to play devil's advocate, if you look at the last in studio, if you look at the last recommendation. No, I'm the uh, devil's advocate. <laughs> if, you, if you look at the last recommendation engine in studio that I put in there in that notebook, you'll see one yeah. I got from Dewey yeah. High. And it's a different type yeah. of recommendation engine. Right. And it's a totally different take. So that wouldn't work with that at all. So then I would have to go and create yeah, more Yeah, it's a totally DSL. different algorithm. That's right, right. That's right. So, yeah, yeah it was just – it okay. was at the time – when I was experimenting with the different uh, engines, it was easier for me to say, carte blanche, just right. replace a whole engine, I think if that makes sense. It might be a factor of how many different engineers are actually, or even data scientists, are working in this domain. Yeah. Right, and what and what sort of flexibility do they need? Uh, let's, let's, okay, yeah. let's unwind from the theoretical ideal DSL. Because guess what? I didn't do one. So <laughs> one of the, I don't know if I should go to the, Maybe I'll go back to your Java code for just one second here. Yeah. There's this thing here. Your recommendation engine. Just remember, map watched. Anonymous traversal watched. So find all of the the videos that this user watched, right? Um, I went ahead and unwound that DSL. Oh. So I have outrated because... Um, there were, you had some different options and some different logic in there, Yeah. but for the particular path that was, I don't know how to say this, the path of the algorithm was basically very simple and this was what it did in the code. Yeah. So I just unwound that DSL with the, with the traversal with, from the Java code and it just turned out to be this. So yeah. there's only a couple of places where I had to do this because okay. you did not use the DSL heavily in this recommendation engine. Right. In that so part of it. No. I unwound right. that stuff. And then I broke it into chunks. So I broke the traversal into chunks like I did before in that other method. Okay. Okay, so the first part of the traversal is the finding similar users part. Um, there's no good way that I've found in Python to get this multi-line. I didn't want to have every single line say traversal equals traversal dot. It's just visually clutter. Yes. I wanted it cleaner yes. like this. Yes. So that meant I had to move all the comments into this comment block above. So hopefully it's not too difficult to follow, but you can sort of go, okay, this comment goes with this line and this comment goes with this line and blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So that's what I did. Um, 
And I, I built this up in a chunk. So this first chunk is getting the similar users. Oh, based on who? That's weird. Based on finding similar users. Done. Okay. Part two: finding videos that were highly rated by similar users. Um, I still have to do some stuff here. That's like, <clears throat> you see this operator dot assign. Mm -hmm. So that's <laughs> that's the assign operator. And then again, that's one of those things where I had to go up to this import and go into that Gremlin Python documentation and find where the I operator see. class was. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. So it's a little bit painstaking because uh, it wasn't obvious necessarily on how to find that. And actually, I had already done most of this before I found that great uh, document here where it says the common imports. Okay. This was one of the last things that I found. Oh, that's too bad because like, that would have been great to just start with, right? <laughs> I did a lot of things the, the hard way. Um, so I got it all, I got it to the point yesterday, last night, where I got it all to, um, and I compile is not the right way to say it for Python, but like where it wasn't complaining at me anymore. Yeah. Um, and then I was actually running it this morning, and this is what I was working on before we came online, is, uh, gotta, I gotta go out of presentation mode here. Um, See if I can find it fairly simply. Fairly simply. Uh, fairly simply. My run window. Um, <laughs> so you know what's a fun exercise? Go into your log of your application and just search for error. Sometimes it's fun. <laughs> um, oh, it looks like I've been. Oh man. Okay, that's not a good thing. I've lost connectivity. There's some interesting errors that here that I need to go yeah. back in. For some reason, sometimes when I'm adding a video and I try to tag it, I get this edge label tagged with, an edge with a simple label already exists. And what I realize, this is fun when I go back up here and look at my log, this video is tagged with data stacks, <laughs> intro, and well, data stacks. Good to see that the cardinality uh, <laughs> operator is working as expected, right? So, so the graph, the cardinality <laughs> we've set as right. being a only a single link between a given video node yes. and a given tag. And that was exactly why that one. property, that, that cardinality was set like that. That's exactly what so, it's for. <laughs> I'm actually... That's great. Um, I think I need to go back and check, though, in this case, if the... I know, I think it's, I know, I think it's right, because the edge... This might be working okay. I'm not sure all the, something I have to learn about the ins and outs of traversals is yeah. if it goes through and it's doing things on the traversal, I assume that once it gets to an error, it stops and doesn't do anything else. But because this is luckily the very last thing this traversal does, Oh. I don't have any errors in the structural integrity of my graph. Yeah, and you know, interesting. I don't know if this is this is conjecture, which I need to investigate. And since you do it, since you're using the Fluent API, and I'm using Session, mm -hmm. right? The difference yeah. to me is that by the time I execute my traversal, I'm executing as a whole set of a single traversal. That's now, so am I. Now so you I. are actually now because you're using tra traversal. A traversal variable and you're chaining them you're effectively doing something very similar mm -hmm. to that um but is that oh okay so you're not that's right okay you are actually now executing a single traversal yeah you are okay i i was yeah. remembering back yeah. before when you had them separated up and i thought that that um error was coming in between one of those um but no okay okay that's good actually okay so the other thing is that i'll show you is i actually have an error. Let's see what I'm saying. Oh, maybe it's actually easier to see in here. Let me see if I did that. Um, maybe not. Did I log in as that user? I did. I should get a recommended videos. Did we ever mm. recover from your other issue earlier? No, no, we okay. didn't. I 
Okay, I was trying to get to the point that I was at right before we started hmm. our broadcast here, which was to show you that even though I didn't have any obvious problems that the IDE was complaining about, once I actually ran the code, um, somewhere in this traversal, it was complaining at me that I had done something that it didn't know, like, you know what I mean? Like an unresolved type oh, or symbol oh, or something right, right, right. Okay. like that. So I don't even have this totally perfect. Okay. And also the thing to notice is that, that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm still returning no results, right? right. I'm iterating, but I'm not actually capturing any of the results. I actually have some code to write here okay. to actually process the results and do stuff. So anyway, I'm part way through this um, implementation of the uh, of the recommendation engine part of things. I'm actually pretty pleased with the progress. I'm assuming yeah. that as long as I have correctly translated your working, and I'm cheating, I admit it. As long as I have correctly translated your working algorithm from right. Java into Python, right. it really should work. It it should. I'm not um, I'm not expecting it not to. One, but this is where I want to get into the bytecode yes. uh, 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 evaluation with you and looking what actually what the traversal yeah, actually and what, is. And one other thing I might suggest is that in the recommendation traversal, I mean, each of those lines, you could technically comment out everything below a particular line and execute that. That's a traversal. And get back a certain... So if you're going to get That's back right. the list of videos, you could just execute that traversal. Do you get back a list of videos? Go to the next one. Is this filtering on everything that's excluded from this user? I could execute, you know, just uncomment that, execute that. And... Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that way you can exactly. kind of, as you step okay. down it, you can see, am I getting what I expect to be getting? And then you know that your inputs are good and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Right. Exactly. exactly. This is awesome, okay, though. Cool. You made, so... like huge a huge amount of progress here um and uh, like we were talking about before i really like though how you ended up going more in line with it and i i could totally see us i like the idea of having the python version and saying okay if you want to see implementation of the dsls right we've got c sharp we have python right i'm sorry c sharp we have java but if you want to see it using yeah, the fluent yeah. api and not that, not that you couldn't do a dsl with that but if you want to see it using the fluent api in a more in line way here we've done it that way in python you know maybe we'll decide to do something else with no right. stage or something i might yeah, still I like do a, D a dsl for yeah. this i, mean, I just haven't gotten there yet um i'm doing a talk about this at, at accelerate and so i'm just trying to make Ooh. i'm trying to get as close to being done as i can by then yeah um and then i'll probably still have a few to do's here and there yeah left to go but this is looking um, i mean again I fine. and as you mentioned earlier once you get one of these then it kind of goes downhill Right, not the project. <laughs> right, the work. Right, once it's a you get mind one, shift thing. Then it, it was then like it... learning. It was like learning Cassandra data modeling for the first yeah. time. And once I finally understood partition key versus clustering keys, I was like, oh yeah, that yeah. makes total sense now. And I, I'm, I'm down with this. And I can do it. The gremlin is feeling kind of the same way for me, where I'm starting yeah. to. It's got a like high. I'm... I believe that there's a yeah, there's a high level of entry, and I can read it. Yeah, there's a high level of entry, and once you start to grok it. And once you get into it a little bit, then it starts to flow. And then once you have a couple, you know, methods implemented and you kind of see how that works, it's like, oh, you know, and then and then it just starts snowballing from there and you, you go faster and faster. Okay, well, we're, you know, we've reached the end of our time and then yeah. some, so I think yeah. we'll... Time we just flows off. so fast with you, Jeff. So fast. Well, thank you, I think. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, right, right. Uh, Adrian does say, oh, hey, Graph, Graph Day just got mentioned for 2020, and he provided a link there uh, in the chat. Oh, perfect. So thank you, Adrian, for Day to Day Texas. They're a little free plug for those guys. Anyway, all right. Very cool, man. I know this is awesome. So uh, it sounds like you'll have it all done next week. Great. Mm, yeah, we'll meet at the same time next Friday. Okay. And we will we will continue the implementation and, and uh, try to make some more progress. Maybe look at some byte code. I'm looking forward to it. Very cool. Well, awesome. And uh, see everybody till next time. All right. See ya.